Hi and welcome to Play Hooky with me. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing how to make the super easy chunky knit stocking using our fingers. This pattern is so simple that once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to adapt it to any size you want. The stockings that you see here roughly measure 11 by 15 and 10 by 15. For the red and white stocking, I used one skein of red and one skein of white that I found at Walmart. And for the antique white one, I used one skein of the Bernat Blanket Big. I've gone ahead and added some suggestions in the description box below of other brands because the red was a little tricky to find. For this pattern, we're going to be working flatly, starting at the bottom of the stocking and working our way up. To begin, create a chain of 16 loops. Wrap the yarn around your fingers with the tail in the palm of your hand. Pull the yarn through and tighten with the tail. Continue feeding the yarn through the center of the previous loop that you made to create your chain. We want to make our loops fairly small for this. I'd recommend about 1.5 to 2 inches. Double check that you have 16 chains and now we're ready for row 1. To create your knit stitch, Pull your yarn through the top of the chain loop. We want to make the loops fairly small for this, so I would recommend one to one and a half inches. Continue pulling a loop through the top of each chain across. That first loop will probably fall to the side. Don't worry about it, just remember to count it. Make sure not to miss the last chain next to the knot. Sometimes that's hard to see. Okay, double check before we move on that you have 16 stitches and then we're ready for row two. We're just going to continue working loops into the previous loops for the next three rows, making four rows in total. Another tip here, keep an eye on the yarn behind the loops. You don't want it to spread out too wide. Instead of working on your lap, I would recommend a flat surface like I am here or on your bed or floor. Now it's time to create the shape of our toe. We're going to do this by decreasing at the beginning and end of the row. This just means that we're going to take two loops and turn them into one. To make a decrease, take the first and second loop and hold them together making sure the last loop of the row is on top. Pull the yarn through both stitches and create a loop. You've just decreased two loops down to one. Continue across creating your knit stitches or loops as normal. When you reach the end and only have two loops left, it's time to create another decrease. Make sure the last loop of the row is on top. Now pull your yarn through, creating a loop, and making your decrease. By the end of this row, you should have 14 loops. For the next row, we're going to repeat the process. We're going to decrease at the beginning and the end of the row. Again, take the first two loops and hold them together, making sure that the last loop of the row is on top. Pull your yarn through and create a loop. And then continue on until you have two remaining stitches. When you reach the end of the row, create a decrease with the last two stitches. Again, make sure that the last loop is on the top. Pull your yarn through to make your loop and your decrease. For this row, you should see 12 loops. We're doing one more decrease row, follow the same steps, and by the end, you should have 10 loops. Now we're ready to create the main body of the stocking. I find it helps to place a stitch marker or a strand of yarn into that very last row so that we can easily keep count of our rows. If you're only working a solid color, just continue until you reach the height that you want. For mine, I created 14 rows. That's because I wanted to create a brim. If you're working two colors, then continue working in your red for the next eight rows. To add your second color, it's really easy to do. Just bring in the white and create a loop, leaving a little tail to weave in later. Don't cut your first color just yet. You might decide you wanna make some changes before you're finished. 
Continue with the white for about eight or nine more rows or when your tail is on the right hand side. To fasten off or cast off, we're going to be feeding the yarn through the loops just like we were for the decreasing rows. To begin, create a loop making it slightly larger than you did before. This is to help this lie a little bit more flatly. Now grab the loop next to it and feed the active yarn through both. Repeat this all the way across, again making sure to make that loop a little bit bigger. We're going to be adding a slip knot to the last loop, but first we need to figure out how much yarn we need for the seaming before we do that. We're going to be working a simple whip stitch to join the two sides of our stocking together, so you'll need approximately two times the length of your stocking to seam it together. If you're working two colors, do the same thing, two times for the length of the brim and then two times for the body. And then pull the tail through the top to form a slip knot. Fold your sides together and pull your yarn through the top of the other side to join the two sides together. Feel for the natural spaces on both sides. This is where we're going to be feeding our yarn through. We're just going to be wrapping, going through, and then tightening. When you come to your second color, tuck in the white and continue on with your second color. I just fed the tail into the back loops and called it good, but if you want it to be more secure, you can always stitch it with a needle and thread. When you get to the area where we were decreasing, it's a little harder to find a space, so just do the best that you can to keep it consistent. And then just continue all the way around, feeling for those natural spaces. A little tip here, you can soften that heel and make it less square as you do your whip stitch. Just kind of tuck it in and manipulate it. Great, we're nearly finished. Fold your brim over and now you're ready to add a little hanger. I just grabbed a stretch of yarn, created a knot, and tucked the knot into the brim. Again, a needle and thread will help keep this in place if you want added security. If your yarn is fraying after you snip it, add a little bit of fabric glue to the tops. And there you have it, an easy peasy chunky knit stocking that will take you less than an hour to make. Now, if you want to resize your stocking, it's super easy to do. Decide on how big you want that toe to be, and then double that number to create your chain. And then from there, you can just work the pattern as normal. I'll go ahead and add the written pattern in the description box below for reference. And if you're wanting to do this with traditional knitting, I'll go ahead and add that as well. Some of you may be wondering if you can work with smaller yarn for this, and absolutely you can. I would recommend that you watch this video first for some helpful tips because it can be a little bit fiddly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.